As we pointed out when we covered Bilderberg, the very first meeting was held at the site of the last Nazi victory of World War II, Operation Market Garden. You can see it in the movie, A Bridge Too Far. And it was at the site of that victory that they held the very first meeting. And Prince Bernhardt, one of the people who organized Bilderberg, was one who suggested that uh, they have that there. He was alleged uh, by many to have betrayed the uh, secretive operation that caused its failure at that point in time. So this is something that has a very long history. It looks to me like the Fourth Reich, but it is all part of the globalist uh, reunification, what Zbigniew Brzezinski, Henry Kissinger, and others have been working on for the last 60 years. Right, and they're going to make this happen no matter what. Obviously, huge anti-immigration rallies all throughout Europe. Yes. And so now they're they're basically forcing their hand and saying, well, we can't. I mean, look at look at this crisis. Crisis and thousands solution. Of people. They had Absolutely. the solution for 60 years. Yeah, I mean, that is just incredible. So I, I hope that you're going to really kind of delve more into that so we can really break that down here at InfoWars because you're right, she is kind of, coming out yes. now as the power broker in the region. Political union through economic crisis and through demographic crisis and an army and a taxing system. Wow. And Germany is on top of it. Well, that's absolutely incredible. Well, thank you so much, David. Now, everyone stick around. Joe Biggs will be joining me in the uh, coming up later on in the show. We're going to break down the Trump show. You know, Biggs, he was kind of on the fence there with Donald Trump. Everyone seems to like what he has to say until you actually get to sit in the audience with him and hear what he doesn't actually say. Uh, but first up, we're going to break down a little bit further what this migrant crisis is really all about and what they're not telling you. So stick around because all of that and more is coming right up. And all you ISIS people threatening us, hey, we're not a French newspaper, okay? We got people that have taken your asses out in this building right now. We're armed to the teeth, and we're not scared. You got that, you sons of bitches? This is Texas. You want to threaten me, you can go straight to hell. You understand that? Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here in a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. A lot of you have been following my progress using Supermail Vitality. The last 19 weeks has been an incredible experience. I was feeling a little down and lethargic during the holidays, and none of the supplements that I was taking were doing any good. That's when my longtime friend from high school, Alex Jones, introduced me to Supermail Vitality. I was a little skeptical at first. Not only would I have the energy to work out and go to the gym, but it, it was actually the changes were happening to my body uh, a lot more rapidly. My whole mood, my libido, everything, had completely changed. The concentrated organic herbs, they stimulate your natural systems to produce the natural hormones that you need. I just really wanted to, to bulk up and hit it hard and I went in for about the first five weeks and was lifting heavy weight and just really hitting it hard and I gained 20 pounds of muscle immediately. Since that, I've decided I was gonna lose some weight and slim down. I just changed up my workout a little bit and 35 pounds came off. Folks, this is not a joke. This is not a gimmick, it's real. Super Male Vitality, available at InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. 
Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Brain Force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of Brain Force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. Still damaging your brain. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. The current immigration crisis in both the U.S. and in Europe has sparked a lot of debate amongst libertarians over immigration. Now, I met a libertarian while I was at the beach a couple of weeks ago, and he's what I'd call an open border supporter. And one of the things he pointed out was the fact that government creates the borders, which is true. I mean, by its very definition, a government is a monopoly on the use of force in a given territory. And that territory is defined by its borders. So, and he also asserted that because people have natural rights, they should be able to freely cross the border whenever they wish and however they want. Now, from a purely anarcho-capitalist standpoint, I like that concept and I tend to agree with it. But here's the problem. Right now, the government is opening its borders for illegal aliens, but they're not doing that out of respect for people's natural rights. They're doing it to expand the size and scope of the government. And one of the ways they do that is by offering welfare to illegal aliens to encourage them to come. Now, unfortunately, what happens is the welfare, it creates this class of people who are completely dependent on the government for support. And when it comes to the voting time, this class of people, they're going to vote for big government politicians that gave them the welfare to begin with. And this is exactly why Democrats, for example, they love the concept of amnesty and illegal immigration because they want to, once they get these people in the country, they know they can flip them, start getting them to vote Democrat, and then they can go after the Second Amendment, for example. Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. And I really shouldn't have to say this, but welfare is not a natural right. I mean, it's basically taxpayers subsidizing a portion of the population. So this whole wealth, giving welfare to legal immigrants, it's basically forcing the taxpayers to pay for class of the population that's going to vote against their rights, which is completely observed. And also, as strangely as this sounds, the government's also using illegal immigrants to push for a so-called regional government. In 2005, globalist politicians and think tanks met and discussed a so-called North American Union, which would be a lot like the EU. And it would basically be a merging of the United States with Canada and Mexico, as bizarre as that sounds. Now, NAFTA is already kind of like that, but NAFTA is just economically. What I'm talking about is politically. And But what we see right now is the Obama administration opening the southern border on Mexico and allowing all these illegal aliens to come into the country. And since 2005, we've also seen the collapse of Mexico, which is now practically a failed state. I mean, the uh, with all the violence and drug cartels and what have you. And so these politicians that met in 2005 to discuss a North American Union, they're going to now they're going to point at Mexico and say that, hey, we were right. You know, this is too big of a problem for just one country to solve. So we need to have a regional government in place and for the U.S. and Canada and Mexico to start working closely together to resolve these crises, <laughs> even though that the United States with the war on drugs and CIA and what have you created a lot of the problems in Mexico to begin with. Also, another problem, illegal immigration changes a culture in a nation, which ultimately changes the country. A culture in a country, you're very interwined. It was back in about the 10th century to about the 14th century, the Byzantine Empire started losing Asia Minor to the Turks and the precursor to the Turks because the Turks were changing the uh, areas, the region's culture from Greek Orthodox to Muslim. 
and ba- and eventually in 1453 the Byzantine Empire disappeared off the map altogether. And now what we're seeing is an eradication of the United States' culture of liberty. And a lot of that is the government can only expand at the expense of individual freedoms. So like I said before, they're bringing all these immigrants in, getting them on welfare, and then they start voting for big government and less for our rights and our freedoms. And so libertarians really need to pick and choose our battles because if we try to push for open borders now, the government's just basically gonna use it as a judo move against us. And they're going to say, oh, yeah, we'll open the borders, all right, but it's going to expand the size of government. It's not going to help libertarians at all. You know, we're, we're only going to end up ultimately getting screwed. So we can't, we can push the anarcho capitalist ideas, but we also have to realize that there's still a government in place and it's like tyrannical. And I like the concept of open borders, but we got to stop this welfare and this state sponsored slavery. If we didn't have the welfare system in place, we could practically open our borders really wide and encourage more immigrants to come. Because the immigrants that are going to come are going to be the ones that fight for themselves and persevere and become something themselves and push American liberties, you know, muscle cars and home businesses, everything that makes this country great. I mean, think about it this way. Imagine if Mexico had a Bill of Rights and Declaration of Independence and so on and so forth, and it was a free country and just like, you know, the United States in, say, 1787 then we could definitely have an open border because it'd just be a paradise of freedom. So, but what can libertarians do right now? How do we get to that point? Well, one thing that we can start doing is export the ideas of liberty across the globe. You know, get people to talk about Murray Rothbard and Ron Paul and Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Von Mises, so on and so forth. Because then when immigrants come into the United States, they're going to have liberty in their hearts and their minds and they're going to want to push for uh, freedoms and prosperity and the government cannot stop it because the spread of ideas is stronger than any standing army but what the government does want to do is keep uh, immigrants coming in the country that don't know liberty don't know freedom and because Machiavelli he once wrote that people who are, are used to having liberty and have liberty in their hearts and their minds they're going to always resist government tyranny. But as population of a nation that's never known liberty, it's always going to submit. So that's what we have to get away from. Once again, this is Kit Daniels with Infowars.com. Be sure to subscribe to the new YouTube channel, Resistance News. The entire narrative that major Western media outlets have crafted around the migrant crisis is a complete fraud. Here's five things the media won't report about the refugee crisis. One, the majority of migrants are not Syrian families fleeing from war and ISIS persecution. Of the 50% who claim to be Syrian, in some areas, 90% don't even have documentation to prove it. UN figures show that 72% of the migrants are men with just 13% women and 15% children. Many of these people have nothing whatsoever to do with the Syrian refugee crisis. Once they reach the safety of countries that refuse to shower them with free cash, they head straight for the welfare havens of Sweden and Germany. Why is the media ordering us to accept these people in the name of feelings and humanitarianism when most of them aren't even fleeing war? They're fleeing to a higher standard of living, which will be funded by European taxpayers. Two, major TV news networks will only broadcast footage that shows the migrants in a positive light. Look at these smiles. Smiling, laughing children, happy mothers, exuberant fathers, the tragedy of the drowned Syrian boy, the truth about which was misreported for days in order to elicit unquestioning sympathy for the migrant invasion. What they won't show is migrants hurling rocks at Hungarians, stealing from charitable Europeans, assaulting old ladies, smashing up towns, or chanting Allah Akbar. They won't broadcast images of jihadist rebels who fought with Al-Qaeda and ISIS-affiliated groups, arriving in Germany as migrants. Why is the media hiding the kind of footage that would sway public opinion on this issue, unless they're complicit in the cover-up? Three, in the name of tolerance, we're being told to open the floodgates for waves of people who are completely intolerant 
of Western values and liberal principles. Since Sweden opened its doors to mass immigration, rapes have skyrocketed by a staggering 1400%.